Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Barb Mitchell, coming to you today from Monaco, where we're at Data Cloud 2022 in person. Fantastic to be together. Uh, Gary, Gary Connolly is here joining us today from Host in Ireland. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Barb. It's great to be here. We're sort of giddy, aren't we? We're sort of giddy to be beside each other and sort of looking at people. It's just great. Thank you yeah. for having me on the show. And I think that's a, a really good way of describing sort of the, the mood here today. But, uh, you know, can you just tell our audience a little bit, um, just go, sort of go back in time. You're celebrating five years now with Host in Ireland, so you've reached a milestone. Can you talk to us about sort of what the what your inspiration was to begin Host in Ireland in the first place and, and your sort of contributions towards sustainability? It's a great question because it was actually a bet. It was a bet that uh, a lot of the industry leaders at the time said, you know what, we need to collaborate. So I came up with a term, I said, okay, let's set up a co-opetition. And a co-opetition is exactly what it says. It's cooperation between competitors. So we started with five, you know, Equinix, Interaction, Digital Realty, and now we're 51, and it's a community. It's all the different layers of the design, the build, the operation. None are more important than the other, and the most important aspect is the people, because the people actually make what is, in essence, a collaboration community that actually, you know, they, they help improve each other as people, and then that spawns out into the data center industry. So that's really what it's about. No more. And I, I really want to hear about one of your programs called DCs for Bees. Yeah. I've seen there's a few things happening around here um, to yeah. hint to that. But can you tell us about that? Yeah, there's a genuine global problem with pollinators. The pollinators are the little fellas that you see, the bees in particular. And globally, about 50% of them are facing extinction. Now, it's a little bit different than, say, the white-nosed rhino or the lion or the other. They, they seem distant, don't they? They sort of, we can't really help them. But the bee, we all have in our backyards. So we actually reached out uh, uh, two years ago to the National Biodiversity Centre in Ireland. And we said, can we help you? And they said, yeah, we really need help because we're scientists. We're not a, all together great communicators like you guys and maybe what we do and we said we will try and specifically improve pollinators food sources flowers trees orchards so it was quite amazing because once we said we're doing orchards people said okay I have a local biodiversity group they have loads of enthusiasm they have loads of energy, but they have no money. So we came along and we said, well, why don't we actually work with the biodiversity? And now we're at 1,500 orchards throughout the whole of the country. And the great thing about orchards, uh, I'm probably boring your audience now, but they're the first flowering thing in spring. And the lads wake up, the bees wake up starving, and they go straight to the orchards. So effectively what it's done is, and, and the DCs for Bees initiative, and a subset of that is orchards in the community. And orchards in the community is two things. Our community of digital people, but more importantly, what we don't do well in the digital infrastructure space is explain what we do to the greater population. They think they're just big gray boxes that use a lot of energy and they don't do anything. This way we reach into the community, into nursing homes, into schools, and we offer them an orchard. And suddenly they say, oh, I haven't had that before. Somebody giving me something. So it actually is connecting our community to their community. And DCs for Bees is now going global. It's just an amazing thing to see because bees are in trouble everywhere. Yeah. Well, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, well, first of all, I want to congratulate you because you're now officially a best-selling author. I am. You are in this book, Greener Data, and that. in it I believe you talk about this a little bit, don't you, the DCs for Bees? Ab absolutely. Now my English teacher when I was in high school would be absolutely horrified, wouldn't he, to think that I am actually a best-selling author, <laughs> to think that I don't know T-H-E-I-R from T-H-E-R-E, -E. but anyway. 
It was a great collaboration. It's 20 odd people looking at the industry of data from totally different angles, not all saying the same thing, and actually saying, we can do better, we should do better, and this is how we can do better. And the little B fellas make it done, to, because of alphabetical order, I'm number two. I'm the second person. And if you know anything about books, most people only read about two chapters, so I'm really happy. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's a movement, I think. Greener it's data, hashtag greener data. There it is. And, um, and uh, there's Are a we website. One? Did we make it to We the... made it to number one, Did yes, you? yeah. It's a oh, best selling. Congratulations. Yes, to well you done. Too. We do. We're in France, so yes, we'll do the, the two G's. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. No, and so yeah, congratulations. Yeah, it's and great. And uh, it launched on Earth Day, so it, and it, was it great, went actually. quickly. It was great actually because again, the whole essence of hosting Ireland is cooperation, collaboration, bringing different people from different continents, different people from different, and that's what JSA did, right? Yeah. You guys basically reached out, said we want to hear from people. Right. What's What's on your mind? Right. What What do you think we should be telling people? So to get twenty odd, yeah. is pretty cool. In six and, months. and the hope is that it it carries on from here, right? Yeah. This isn't the this isn't the beginning and end. It's just the beginning. So, yeah, uh, yeah we're excited. And and so just lastly, if, as we think about the future, let's let's sort of cast our eyes forward from here. What are you most excited about for Host in Ireland and for the industry? What I'm most excited about is the fact that data in the centres is the oxygen or the steam of this industrial revolution and we're finally now moving into a phase where people realize that data and what it does not just Netflix not just Facebook health systems you know all of the great stuff that's been accelerated through COVID because of our dependency on it is now becoming mainstream the other thing I'm really excited about, I don't know about the United States, but the data center people in Ireland and in Europe were, were actually, during COVID, were seen as essential workers. So you had this elevation of, oh, health workers, digital workers, it's a utility. And as we go forward, it's going to start to become part of the narrative of we can't do a lot of what we have to do, which is change our behavior, reduce carbon, we can't do it without data. And the data that's in the centers is what's given the smarts to our cars, to our grids, and all the rest of it. So I'm actually excited to, ch to see that evolve, where we're less talking about centers and more talking about data, because there's two words in data center. And it's a bit like, you know, we don't talk much about substations anymore. We talk about electricity. So where we are at the moment is everyone's obsessed with the hardware, when actually, it's now evolving into the smarts. So I'm really excited about that. I'm also excited about the youth coming into the industry. Mm, yeah. There's genuine people that say, I want to be in the data industry. Kids, they're coming from their rooms where they're immersed in all the gaming. So the digital space is just them. Yeah. So that whole space, oh, we need hardware, we need that, we need this, but they're actually using their MIPS to develop the next wave. So I think it's the time now for more females, for more uh, minority groups, less bald-headed, grey-haired blokes. We need to just go into the background, corral more of the youth and actually give them the lead. So it's, you know, I'm, I'm looking here and I see more females, I see more youth, I see, well, I see alcohol over there, so that's obviously going to be a good night. Um, but in general, there's a general mood of change, right? And uh, that's what I'm excited about. Yeah. Yeah, brilliantly said on all counts. I think there's a lot to look forward to. Yeah. And uh, and Gary, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. It's yeah. been a pleasure. Yeah. Pleasure to see you. Yeah, it's great to see everybody. Yeah. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. Happy networking. <laughs>